The cannabinoids as anti-cancer drugs. Do they even work? Should you be using them? I'm having a brand new webinar, CBD for dogs and cats, everything you need to know. It's gonna have a special focus on cancer, including CBD, THC, and all the array of different holistic remedies. It's happening Tuesday, March 21st at 5 p.m. Pacific. It's free, you can click the link in the box below to sign up. A recent review study titled Cannabinoids as Anti-Cancer Drugs there's a bunch of things here you really should be aware of. There's been a number of different studies in the last 10 years, and they're showing specific anti-cancer effects in multiple different ways. Perhaps I'm thinking I'm all progressive using CBD THC for cancer. Turns out this has been used medicinally for thousands of years. In fact, there's evidence of it first being recorded as use medicinally in the original Chinese medicinal pharmacopoeia, 2800 years BC. Yes, recorded evidence 5,000 years ago. In terms of understanding exactly how is CBD, THC being beneficial to us, our dogs, our cats as mammals, turns out that every mammal has a system called an ECS or an endocannabinoid system. It runs all throughout the body, kind of paralleling where our blood supply goes, where our lymphatic system goes. Our dog's brains, our cat's brains, our brains, they naturally produce cannabinoids that travel through this ECS or endocannabinoid system, and they can attach to specific receptors called CB1 receptors, CB2 receptors. CB1 receptors are found primarily in the nervous system, or CNS, the CB2 receptors, primarily in the immune system. That's how mammals, like you and I, our dogs and cats, they can take CBD, they can take THC, and have an array of so many medicinal benefits. First real documented study, 1970s, showed that THC in Caminol, it inhibited lung adenocarcinoma cells. That's lung cancer. The next bigger study happened around the year 2000, and here they're looking at a type of a brain tumor called a glioma. THC, it was injected into these brain tumors and actually causing tumor cell regression. An interesting study in 2006, and they were treating people that had another type of brain tumor called a glioblastoma. And with this, they were treated with an oral nasal THC CBD spray. This is a trial. Some people were taking a placebo and what they found that those that were on the oral nasal spray, 83% of those people were alive 12 months later. Unfortunately, those that were on the placebo, only 44% of those were alive 12 months later. In the last 10 years, there's been an array of different studies on many, many, many different types of cancers. So for skin cancer or melanoma, researchers have found that the cannabinoids work by causing cycle cell arrest, inhibiting the production of a protein called the AKT protein. But what researchers have found is many other cancers, they use the same protein to grow. This includes breast cancer or mammary cancer, stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, and prostate cancer. Another type of skin cancer called squamous cell carcinoma, they found that CBD caused apoptosis or cell death by stimulating the production of DOSP1, another type of protein. CBD and THC has also been shown to inhibit tumor cell invasion and spread or metastases. Another study found that when the cannabinoids, they bind to CB1 receptors, they were inhibiting prostate cell cancer cells from spreading. There's a really common cancer many of our dogs get called hemangiosarcoma. sarcoma. My first dog in practice, this is Hoochie, who's this awesome shepherd cross. That's what he died of. And he was only eight. The way that some of the cancer cells grow and spread is by creating new blood vessels. It's a thing called angiogenesis. And what they've found is some of the cannabinoids, they can decrease angiogenesis of these cancer cells by inhibiting certain factors such as VEGF, known as a vascular endothelial growth factor. Then the cannabinoids, they have direct benefits and effects on the immune system. So with pancreatic cancer, they found that CBD and THC can be effective against some types of pancreatic cancers because they're enhancing the immune blockade of the pancreatic cancer cells. Like they're having a direct effect on the immune system fighting those cancers. The cannabinoids like CBD, THC, etc., they also aid in something called chemo resistance. What that means if an animal or person is getting chemotherapy as a form of treatment for cancer, the cancer cells can figure out how to evade you know, some of those chemotherapeutic drugs. But with CBD, THC, they can help lessen that. So it's not just that some of these cannabinoids are having multiple different ways in terms of affecting many of these types of cancers. 
they can also work with many of the conventional treatments. The researchers conclude by saying that there is overwhelming evidence showing likely many, many clear benefits for the use of CBD, THC for cancers in people. Obviously that can be extrapolated back to our dogs and our cats. But they also conclude by saying, we need more studies. More st what I know, I've had a few different animals die of cancer, unfortunately. The current treatment options, they're not that great, especially with our animals. I mean, I've yet to see a really successful chemotherapeutic program cure a dog with lymphoma. It just doesn't work. Meaning if your dog, your cat is ever to get cancer, you need to be considering multiple modalities. And CBD, THC, clearly it's gotta be way up on your list. One of the big, big things with cancer is just being able to successfully manage the pain. When my last dog, Louis, had this horrible type of mouth cancer, the only thing that gave him really adequate pain relief with THC in combination with CBD, he was on a fentanyl patch. He was on a bunch of different non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Nothing else was effective. Like the only thing that made him happy and comfortable was this stuff. It was CBD in combination with THC. When Hoochie had cancer, he had hemangiosarcoma. If I had any idea now, you know, if I knew then what I know now, I would have completely changed his form of treatment. As far as doses, I suggest starting on the CBD dose of three milligrams of CBD per 10 pounds of body weight twice a day. Like two lose 20 pounds. She'd be getting six milligrams of CBD twice a day. If you're using my CBD product, that would equate to two drops twice a day. We're using a combination of THC and CBD, and I think for many animals that's probably ideal. Ideally look for four to one tincture, where it's four parts CBD, one part THC, and you're dosing it based on the CBD concentration, which is three milligrams for 10 pounds of body weight twice daily to start. The cannabinoids are pretty impressive, and I see them as being really beneficial for so many of the health conditions our dogs and cats can get. If you're interested in learning more about this, I encourage you to sign up for my new webinar. It's happening on Tuesday, March 21st, 5 p.m. Pacific. It's free. You can click the link in the box below to sign up.